السلام عليكم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد brothers and sisters invited guests we are very honored uh, to see you tonight we pray allah the almighty will guide all of us and I pray that Allah will bless my tongue to articulate what I feel in my heart. I want to thank the Muslim Student Association of this wonderful institution, George Mason University. And may Allah, the Almighty, bless us tonight. I want to first say that I think it's befitting that a Muslim, myself, who used to be a Christian is going to talk about one of the great and illustrious prophets, Prophet Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him. I want to remind especially the Muslims who are here, who used to be Christian like myself, something that the Prophet said, peace and blessing be upon him. He said, Ida amana bi isa thumma amana bi falahu ajrani. Whoever believes in Jesus and then believes in me, Muhammad, will have a double reward. So for my immigrant brothers who were born Muslims, I have something over you. Before I get into the particulars about uh, Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him, let me give you um, some basic um, uh, foundation. All of my Christian friends who are here tonight, I want to say even before I begin that please do not be offended by anything that I say that might appear to you not worthy of the great personality of Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him. I'm letting you know from the beginning I don't intend to do that. I don't think it would happen. But sometimes, um, in our zeal to try to explain our faith, we may say something when other people might take it not in such a good way. So I want to let you know from the very beginning, I apologize if such a thing should happen. Let me first give you some background. Whenever God Almighty sends a prophet to the people, it means that something is wrong, not that it's something right. And usually when messengers come, they come in times of darkness and ignorance. And it is the job of that prophet to come to the people and take them out of ignorance and bring them to the light of God. According to one of our traditions, Allah the Almighty has sent on this earth 124,000 prophets. In the Arabic language, Nabi, prophet in the plural, Anbiya, 124,000 prophets. And among these 124,000 prophets, 315 of them were special prophets called Rasul, or Rusul, which means messenger. 124,000 prophets, 315 messengers. And of the 124,000 prophets, 25 of them have been mentioned specifically in the Quran. Of the 124,000 prophets, 25 of them has been mentioned in the Quran. And of the 25 prophets that's mentioned in the Quran, five of them is mentioned in a very special way, the greatest. Noah, Noah, Ibrahim, Abraham, Musa, Moses, Isa, Jesus, and Muhammad. Of the 25 prophets mentioned in the Quran, five of them mentioned in a very special way, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. 
Allah mentioned in the Quran as a Muslim Amana Rasulu Bima Unzila Ilahim Rabbihi Wal Mu'minun Kulun Amana Billahi Wa Malaikatihi Wa Kutubihi Wa Rusulihi Muhammad believes in what was revealed to him and so do the believers. All of them, every Muslim believes in God Almighty. Every Muslim believes in the angels, the last day. Every Muslim believes in the prophets and the books. Now I want to say something tonight that is critical for us to understand as we move along, is that Jews, Christians, and Muslims have something in common. All of them are people of faith. They are people of faith. Jews who believe in the Torah and believe that the Torah was revealed by God Almighty are people of faith. Muslims believe in the Torah as the book of God. And he, Allah, revealed the Torah and the gospel. So as a Muslim, we must believe in the Torah. The Torah revealed to the great prophet Moses, peace and blessing be upon him. And what does Allah say about the Torah in the Quran? فِيهَا هُدًا وَنُورٍ and in it, the Torah is guidance and light. So God revealed the Torah to Moses. And God Almighty Allah revealed the Injil or the Gospel to Jesus. And what does Allah say about the Injil, the Gospel? And in it is guidance and light. You can't get better than that. So what do Muslims believe in? Muslims believe that the Torah is the word of God. It's in the Quran. And the Muslims have a special relationship with Jews and Christians. And they are given a special name in the Quran. They're called Ahli Kitab, the people of the book. Why are they called the people of the book? Because Jews, true Jews, don't do anything unless they get the guidance from the Torah. Why? Because the Torah is from God Almighty. We believe that as Muslims. Christians are called Ahli Kitab. They're the people of the book. Why? Because they follow the book and they don't follow themselves. They follow the book that was given to their prophet, Prophet Jesus. Peace and blessing be upon him. What do we have in common? We people of faith. No Jew living today was on Mount Sinai. Sinai. When God revealed the Torah to Moses. No Jew living today saw the great miracles of God as he took the people, the children of Israel, away from Pharaoh and saved the children of Israel. No Jew today saw the manna and the quails from heaven. None of them witnessed when the Jews were running from Pharaoh and Pharaoh was drowned in the, in the ocean. None was there. But they believe in it. Why? Because they're people of faith. And guess what? Muslims believe it too. Because we are people of faith. We believe in Moses not because we witness one miracle of Moses. No. We believe in Moses as a prophet because the Quran says that Moses was a prophet. No Christian experienced or saw or witnessed the miracles of Jesus. Not one, living today. But yet Christians, out of faith, believe in their book because God Almighty talks about the miracles of Jesus in their book. But they're people of faith. And likewise, today, no Muslim witness, no Muslims witness the miracles of Moses or the miracles of Jesus. But yet every Muslim believes in the miracles of Moses and the miracles of Jesus. Why? Because we witness them? No. But because the Quran says it said it and we believe in it. We're people of faith. Now, brothers and sisters, before we proceed, let me give you one more point that I think is critical. 
In Islam, we can negotiate about many things. But there are some things that's non-negotiable. Non-negotiable. And the one non-negotiable thing is absolutely God is wahid. God is one. There's no debate. There's no argument. And anyone who makes a partner with God Almighty, then they have violated the worst violation you can imagine. We can negotiate, we can argue about uh, entertainment. Muslims argue about music, to what degree we can participate in music. What music is permissible, what music is not permissible. We can negotiate about that. We can even negotiate to some degree how to pray, which direction to pray. Maybe I believe that that's the direction of Mecca, but someone comes and gives me another argument and turn me that way and thinking that that is the way to Mecca. We can negotiate about that. There are many things we can negotiate about, but the one thing we can never negotiate about, and that is the absolute oneness of God. There's two things. There's Al-Khaliq, the creator, and Makhluk, creation. Everything in the universe is a creation of God. Everything in the universe is a creation of God. And God is al awwal He's first and he's last. There was nothing before him. There's nothing after him. He's the creator. And everything else is creation. And because of that, we have this verse in Quran. I'm going to put it here because we're going to come back to it. I want you to remind me. Every soul shall taste of death. Everything in creation must die. Illa Allah, except Allah. Everything must die. Prophets live and prophets die. Angels live and angels die. In fact, we are taught in the end, the last one to be standing is the angel of death. And then Allah will order the angel of death to die. And everything ever been created will go out of existence. Allah except Allah. We can negotiate about a lot of things, but the one thing we can never negotiate about is the absolute oneness of God. And every prophet, 124,000 of them, all said the same thing. God is one. Do not associate gods with God. Now, let us talk about Prophet Jesus from an Islamic perspective. Allah mentioned in the Quran the similitude of Jesus before God is like the similitude of Adam. And God created Adam from dust and said, and said, be, and Adam was. It is no accident that Adam is mentioned in the Quran 25 times. And Allah mentioned in the Quran, the similitude of Jesus with God is the similitude of Adam. God created Adam from dust. Let me stop. All of us in this auditorium tonight, Muslim, Christians, Jews, black, white, Americans, non-Americans, let me say something about us, what the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said. Mankind, all of them are the children of Adam. And Adam was created from the dust. So wherever we are, wherever we come from, one thing we have in common tonight in this auditorium, all of us are human beings, and all of us come from our father Adam, and this is why in the Quran we're called the Bani Adam, the children of of Adam because Adam was the first man. I said that Adam is mentioned in the Quran how many times? 
25 times. And I said, Allah compares Jesus to who? Adam. And guess how many times Jesus is mentioned in the Quran? Exactly 25 times. Jesus is mentioned in the Quran 25 times. Now I know some of you don't believe me. Here's my Quran. If you like to take it and go look in the Quran, but take my word for it, Jesus is mentioned in the Quran 25, 25 times. And so is Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. Peace and blessings be upon him. Now, brothers and sisters, let me first give you a little bit of information which is, which is important. How many of you heard of Reverend Al Sharpton? The minister, the Christian minister from, from Brooklyn, New York? You know, last year, Reverend Sharpton discovered something about his family lineage. And he found out that his name Sharpton, that he got from his great-grandfather, and his great-grandfather got his name Sharpton, not from his father, but he got his name from Alexander Sharpton. Who was Alexander Sharpton? Alexander Sharpton was the slave master of the great-grandfather, Reverend Sharpton. So we learn in slavery, black people who were enslaved, the slave master took away their name and gave them the slave master's name. But Allah said in the Quran, Udu'uhum li abaihim, call them by their father's name. Every human being has a right to be called by the name of their fathers. Now, I ask you a personal question. How many of you are married? Raise your hand. Okay, good. All right. Sisters, how many of you, don't raise your hand. How many of you are not married but plan to get married? And those of you sisters who, now you can raise your hand. Those of you who, no, not yet. Those of you who plan to get married, how many of you will take on the name of your husband? Raise your hand. Okay. Now let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. In Islam, when a woman marries a man, she's not obligated to take on his name. Why? Because Allah said in the Quran, call them by their father's name. If you look at Aisha radiallahu anha, the wife of Prophet Muhammad, she never became Aisha Abdullah. Muhammad, the messenger, was called Muhammad ibn Abdullah, his father Abdullah. He will always be Muhammad ibn Abdullah, Muhammad, the son of Abdullah. Aisha will always be bint Abi Bakr. She will be the daughter of her father, Abu Bakr. She never changed her name. She was Aisha Zaljitin Nabi. She was Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, but she never changed her name. But in this Western society, when a person put their name on you, it meant ownership. Now, 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 wait a minute. Those sisters who married to your husbands, you got their name. It's okay. He didn't mean ownership. But really, if you study Western history, you will find out that when women married men, she became, she became their property. And so that, that tradition has continued. So Allah says, call them by their father's name. And everyone is the, is, the, is the son and daughter of their father. And that's why this illicit relationship is crazy. Some people don't even know their father. According to who? According to who? Who? According to who? Who? World Health Organization. No, that's what it's called. It's called who? Intimacy between men and women happen a hundred million times a day on this earth. A hundred million times a day on this earth. And it's rumored that a lot of it takes place in New York City. But that's just another issue. And as a result of that, 810,000 conceptions a day on this earth. 
that results in 350,000 sexually transmitted diseases a day on this earth, that results in 150,000 abortions every day on this earth. And there are a lot of men, girls and boys who don't even know their father. So it's possible, for instance, you can be, for instance, a governor of New York, for instance. No, I'm just saying. No, I'm, just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. And, and, and let's say you just, you know, go meet someone at the Mayflower Hotel. Uh, no, no, I'm just saying. No, I'm not. I'm just saying something. Right? And maybe there's some conception. And she's not going to say, a oh, governor, guess what? No, that's a, that's a different topic. I forgot what topic I was thinking. So call them by their father's name, and every child has a right to know their daddy, have a right to know who their father is. Then if every person is called by the name of their father, how come? How come in the Quran it says Isa ibn Maryam? Isa ibn Maryam. Jesus, the son of Mary. All throughout the Quran, Jesus, the son of Mary. How come Jesus is not known by the name of his father? Because he had no father. And you will learn today, there are things in the Christian theology where Muslims agree 100%. I'm going to talk about those. And then you're going to find out that there are things that the Quran mentions that the prophet's traditions mention that's not even mentioned in the Bible. Miracles about Jesus that you didn't even know about, that Muslims know about. I'm going to talk about that. And then finally we're going to talk about a few differences. Remember tonight is not a debate. We're saying that this is Muslim's view of Jesus. This is an Islamic view of Jesus. It's a Quranic view. It's how the Muslims view Jesus according to the Quran. It's how the, Jesus, the Muslims view Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him, according to the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. And some of you non-Muslims will be amazed at what's going to come out of my mouth in the next few moments. Jesus, the son of Mary. Now let me stop here and say this. What name on this earth is the most popular name? What name? There's no debate, no argument, that the most popular name on this earth is Muhammad. Right now, Muhammad is the second most populated name in all of the United Kingdom. Everywhere you go, people talk about Muhammad and take on the name Muhammad. Muhammad is a beloved name of Muslims. How many of you in this audience, either your first name, your middle name, or your last name is Muhammad? Raise your hand. Look at this. Come on. Look at that. I mean, come on. I know someone who loved Muhammad so much, his name is Muhammad, Muhammad, Muhammad. <laughs> Love Muhammad. You can't help it. Right? It's, it's, look, they, they love Muhammad. And usually when you take on the name of someone, it's a, it's a badge of honor. You respect them. You, you, you love them. You honor them. Now, It is not surprising that among Muslims, there are Muslims who take on the name of Isa, Jesus, out of respect and love for Jesus. It's no different than Muslims taking on the name of Musa. How many of you know a Muslim with the name Musa? Musa means Moses. Moses is a great prophet. We love Moses. So Muslims take on their name. How many here tonight name Moses, Musa? All right. Muslims take on the name of Abraham, Ibrahim, Khalilullah, the friend of God. How many of you know Muslims with the name Abraham? Raise your hand. Look at that. How many here tonight name Abraham? All right. Sister raising her hand. Your name is Abraham? So Muslims with the name Isa, Muslims with the name Moses, Abraham, Muslims with the name Yaqub, Jacob. 
I know Muslims with the name Yaqub, Jacob. Everywhere you see Muslims with those names. Now, I would argue that Khadija is a very popular name among Muslim women. True? Khadija is a very popular name, the name of the Prophet's wife. Aisha is a popular name among Muslim women. True or not? I would argue that the name Miriam is as popular a name among Muslim women as any other name. Am I right? Miriam. How many here named Miriam? Ah, ha, ha. Wait a minute. Raise your hand. One. Raise them up. Two. Three. So you see. Four. She, she just remembered. Now, what does that mean? It means that Muslims respect Miriam. The 19th chapter of the Quran is entitled Mary, Miriam. So there's no doubt about it. Muslims love and respect Jesus. They name their children after him. They name themselves after him. They name themselves after his righteous mother. And let me tell you what the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said about, about Mary. He mentioned two perfect women. One of them, Asiya. Believe it or not, the wife of Pharaoh. Perfect woman. And the second one, Miriam, the mother of Jesus. Two perfect women. Now, remind me to come back to what, the second verse. My brother who recited the Quran, he recited in the very beginning by saying, Inni Abdullah. Put that there for a minute. I'm going to come back to that. If the most popular name on earth is Muhammad, I'm going to ask you a second question. What name is most beloved to God? Is it Muhammad? It's not what the Prophet said. What name? Ahabu illallah. Most beloved to God. What name? Hmm? Abdullah. Abdullah means the servant of God. The most beloved name to God is Abdullah, Abdurrahman, the servant of the beneficent, the servant of God. Why? Because Abdullah, if you study the Quran, there's a verse what the French would call les d'etre, the very purpose of life. God said, I have not created spirits or human beings except to worship me. It is God's right to be worshipped by everybody. Jinn, spirits, and human beings to worship God. Who must worship God? Everybody from the prophets on down. Because there's one thing that's non-negotiable in Islam, and that is God is one, and everyone must worship God the Almighty. Now, the Christians refer to Jesus as the Word. And brothers and sisters, the more I study the more I've come to the conclusion that there are many facts that Muslims and Christians especially agree upon, but where we differ is the interpretation. I'll give an example. Christians teach that Jesus is the Word. Muslims absolutely believe that Jesus is the Word of God. It's called Kalimatullah, the Word of God. And there's many evidences from Quran and from Sunnah. Uh, it's called in the Quran, Minhu. He's the word of God and a spirit from him. Now, what do you mean as a Muslim that Jesus is the word of God? Since you say that Jesus didn't have a father, how did he come into existence? Allah said, Kun, be. And Jesus was. And Mary was pregnant. And she carried him. Jesus was born from a virgin. 
Some might interpret it to mean that because he's God, therefore his birth must be a different uh, 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 way other than the regular birth or regular uh, coming into existence. Interpretation. Now, there's a miracle in the Quran that the Quran mentions that you don't find in the Torah and you don't find in the Injil. And that is when Jesus was born, Jesus spoke from the cradle as a baby. And when Jesus was born, the people, they looked at Mary accusingly because they knew she didn't have a husband. How could you have this? And your father and your mother, your mother's not a prostitute. How could you have a baby without a man? And what did Mary do? She pointed to the baby Jesus. How can we speak to him? He's in these obey. How can we speak to him? And Jesus spoke. And Jesus' first words were, Inni Abdullah. Not insignificant. I am the servant of God. I am the servant of God. I am the servant of God. Not the son of God, not divine. I am the servant of God. Now, I'm going to ask you a few questions. How many Muslims believe that Jesus raised the dead? Raise your hand. Look at this. Muslims Raise the hand. A miracle of Jesus raising the dead. And yet Muslims, they raise the hand and say, yes, we believe that Jesus raised the dead. Bi'idhnillah. By the permission of God. How many of you believe that Jesus cured those born blind? Raise your hand. Muslims raising their hand. They didn't see Jesus perform the miracle, but they believe that Jesus touched the eyes and the people were able to see. How many believe that Jesus cured those who had leprosy? Raise your hand. Look at this. Muslims believe it. Why? Because it's in the Quran. They didn't witness it. God mentions it in the Quran. Muslims don't hide it. It's true. It's real. It's there. He did it. How many Muslims believe? Or how many of you believe that Jesus turned water into wine? Raise your hand. Uh-oh. 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 Where those hands go? How many believe Jesus turned water into wine? One, two. You, my good brother, raise your hand. No, you. Yes. Yes. You had no idea I was going to call on you, did you? He said, what did the heck I get myself into? Why do you believe that Jesus turned water into wine? Ah, hmm. Sister, you mentioned that you believe Jesus turned water into wine. Why? No, don't turn around. You. Why do you believe it? You learned it somewhere. It was when you went to church that Sunday. That's when you learned it. <laughs> Muslims don't deny it. But because we can't verify it, we silent. Because one of the things that the Quran does is called Musaddiq Musaddiqun Lima Ma'akum. It verifies what is with you. And the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, had so much respect for the angel and the Torah, he gave advice to his followers. He said, Let to Sadiqu Ahli Kitab, wa let to Kadibuhum, wa lakin kulu. Don't verify what the people of the book say, but don't deny it. We don't say that Jesus didn't turn water into wine. We say because Allah didn't say it and the prophet didn't mention it, we are afraid to attribute something to Jesus that may not be true. So we want to be careful because we believe that some of the things have been changed. So therefore, we want to be careful 
not to say that Jesus did such a thing or said such a thing, but then we don't want to deny it, so we are, we're silent on it. Now, a miracle that the Quran mentions that the Bible doesn't mention, the Torah doesn't mention, the Gospel doesn't mention. Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him, took clay and made an image of a bird. And he blew in the clay, and the clay became a living bird. A miracle that's in the Quran that the Bible doesn't mention. You will see that Muslims don't try to diminish Jesus or what he's done. But in fact, the Quran and the Sunnah seems to give more ammunition to the Christians, but then give it interpretation. Now let me tell you the, the, the one that's going to blow your mind. What do you have to do when you go and sit on a plane? What do the flight attendants tell you? Put your seatbelts on. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to make sure you got your seatbelts on. Ready? Got them on? Let me check. <laughs> Our prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, every human being that's born is touched by Satan at his birth or her birth, and they cry out because of that touch. Every human being that's born is touched by Satan. Every human being at birth is touched by Satan, illa, except two people. And who are the two people? Who are the two people? Who are the two people? Yes, Mary and Jesus. The only human beings never touched by Satan at birth. This hadith, this tradition, muttafakun alayhi, muttafakun alayhi, sahih, in al-Bukhari and Muslim and other places. If you don't believe me, you want to check it out, I want you to get Bukhari hadith, volume number four, Kitabul al-Anbiya, in the book of the prophets, and under Isa, under Jesus, you will read what the prophet said about him. Peace and blessing be upon him. So you will learn this about our prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. He doesn't shy away from telling the truth. He doesn't hide or diminish the miracles of Jesus. Now, what's up here? Hmm? Ah, thank you. Kullu nafsin da'ikatul maut. Every soul shall taste of death. Question, Muslims. What happened to Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him? What happened to him? Matta, he died. What happened to Abraham? Matta, he died. What happened to Musa? Matta, he died. What happened to Noah? But didn't you tell me he lived to be 950 years? Huh? But what happened after that? He died. Muslims, what happened to Jesus? He's still alive. Hayyun. Jesus has never died. This is the belief of the Muslims. How Christians and Muslims differ? Christians believe that Jesus died on the cross. And Jesus was resurrected. Last Friday, Good Friday, the celebration of the death of Jesus. And this past Easter, the holiest day of the Christians, when Jesus was resurrected. Our belief is similar, almost. Allah says, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا سَلَبُوهُ They didn't kill him, they didn't kill Jesus, nor did they crucify him. Bal Rafa Ilehi Rafa Ilehi No God raised Jesus up to himself. Muslims absolutely believe in the ascension of Jesus. Jesus ascended, and right now Jesus is in heaven. But wait a minute, Mr. Speaker, you said what? 
كُلُّ نَفْسٍ دَائِكَةُ الْمَعْرِ Every soul must die except God. But you said that Jesus a thousand, two thousand years ago was raised up in heaven. He didn't die. Ha, we got you. You got us, right? But that doesn't mean he's not going to die. Jesus must die. We're going to come back to that in a minute. What was Jesus? In the Quran, Jesus is called the Nabi, a prophet. But then he was more than that. He was a Rasul. 124,000 prophets, Nabi. 315 Rasul, messengers. So Jesus was a Nabi and a Rasul, like many prophets. Muhammad was a Nabi and a Rasul. Moses was a Nabi and a Rasul. Isa, a uh, Nabi and a Rasul. But there is something about Jesus. I have looked and I have not found this title except with Jesus. In the Quran, Jesus is referred to 11 times with this title. al Masih. El Masih, El Masih. El Masih. Eleven times in the Quran. No other prophet called El Masih. Now, what does Christ mean? What does Christ mean? Anointed. Anointed. Muslims think that Christians take their name from Jesus. They don't take their name from Jesus. They're called Christians. They take their name from the anointed one. In Hebrew, it would be Messiah. Jesus is the Messiah. Do Jews believe in Jesus as a prophet? No. Do Jews believe in Jesus as a Messiah? No. Why don't they believe in him as a Messiah? Huh? Why? Why don't they believe in him as a Messiah? Because why? Huh? huh? No, no. Yes. Yeah. He didn't do the job of the Messiah. The Messiah was supposed to come and bring peace on the earth. He didn't do it, so he's not the Messiah. But why must Jesus come back? This stuff is good, man. I mean, really, honestly, this stuff is, this is delicious. Nobody says, let me tell you something. Let me tell you about whom we worship, whom the Christians and the Muslims and the Jews worship. Because Allah said in the Quran, Ilahuna uh, wa ilahukum wahid. Your God and our God is one. Our God and your God is one. There's only one God. We, 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 sometimes we get it wrong, you know. Why? Because we're people of faith. We believe. We believe, you believe, and we believe. Now, Allah said in the Quran, وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهِ يَفْعَلُ مَا يُرِيدُ And God does whatever He wants to do. You believe that? Now, look throughout history. And see how Allah, God, has saved his prophets. Moses, he saved them from Pharaoh in a miraculous way. He saved the children of Israel. They went across the Red Sea, and he drowned Pharaoh and the, uh, his soldiers. Look at Abraham. Abraham was about to be thrown in the fire. And Allah ordered the fire to be cool. Abraham didn't die in the fire. Why? Allah does what he please. Everyone tonight agree that God can do whatever he wants. True? He has the power. But hasn't God Almighty allowed some prophets to be murdered? It's in the Quran. Some prophets were murdered. It's in the Torah. It's in the Bible. 
the cousin of Jesus, what was his name? Yahya, uh, uh, John, John the Baptist. It's reported that he was murdered. He was beheaded. Other prophets had died. God not able to save them? Of course he was. He was able to save them, but he didn't. Why? For his reason. His reasons are beyond us. This is what makes him who he is. We, you know, I was uh, uh, at an airport, and um, I had just come back from, uh, from a trip in the Guadi airport, and I got a cab, and the cab driver was listening to a, a radio station, and a, and a preacher was preaching, and I'm listening to the sermon. And the preacher says something like this. Well, if, if I were God, I would have done it this way. And I said, no, if you were God, you'd do the same way God did it. Because that's what making God. You, you see? We ain't, ain't. I mean, we're right. We, the... So why did God do it that way? Not only did Allah save Jesus, but he saved them in a very special way. He raised them up to himself. And Jesus is in heaven. One of the things that Jesus called in Quran, and by the way, I'm working on my conclusion. I don't know if you can tell. Uh, we're about to land soon. So make sure your seatbelt's on. Allah mentions in the Quran, innahu la'ilmin li sa'a. That Jesus is a sign of the sa'a, of the hour. Jesus is a sign of the hour. And according to our tradition of our prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, the day of judgment will not happen until there are some signs. And one of the signs is the return of Jesus. Muslims absolutely believe in the return of Jesus. Jesus has to come. Why? He has to fulfill the Messiah. He has to come, and Jesus will be a just ruler. It's there. We believe it. See, we're not hiding it. Jesus will come to this earth as a just ruler. Why? He's al Masih. He is the Messiah. And it will come about, and Jesus will come about, and he's not going to teach a new teaching. It's going to be the same teaching that we have, the teaching of the last book of Al-Quran. And Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him, will bring about justice on this earth. And according to what our prophet taught us, peace and blessing be upon him, there is no more difficult trial to human beings than what is called ad-dajjal, what you call the Antichrist. The Antichrist is real. He will bring havoc on this earth, called the Antichrist. And lo and behold, who will put an end to the Antichrist? Is Jesus. Is Jesus. Now, brothers and sisters, Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him, is a huge test for us, like everyone else. Allah the Almighty will ask Jesus on the day of judgment. Now remember when God asks a question, he doesn't ask because he doesn't know. He asks to teach us. Did you tell the people to worship you, you and your mother, as gods besides Allah? And of course, Jesus would deny that. Because no prophet ever have told people to worship me. No prophet. It's unbefitting for a prophet to say, worship me. It's unfitting for any prophet to say other than worship the Almighty. We believe that Jesus worshiped the Almighty and taught the people to believe in him. I need somebody to help me. I'm almost finished. Somebody help me. What day is today? Thursday, March 27, 2000. 8 A.D. Good. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, we don't think about what we be saying. I mean, just think about it for a minute. March. What's March? Where did March come from? 
Mars, the god of war. Thursday. You don't mean Thursday, you mean Thor's day. Thor. Frigg's day. Saturn day. Sunday. Moon day. Tyre's day. Wooden's day. I gave you enough, go study it. <laughs> Serious. When you wake up and see the tricks that have been played on human beings, you'll be shocked. What do you mean 2008 AD? What does AD mean? Anno Domini. What does Anno Domini mean? The year of our Lord. There's only one Lord. That's God. Now, brothers and sisters, I leave you with this thought. Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, said this, and I close with this. Arju and takunu nisfa ahli jannah. He's talking to his companions, and he said, I hope that you will be one half the people of paradise. I hope that you, Muslims, my followers, will be one half the people of paradise. Hmm. 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 If he said, I hope you will be one half the people of paradise, who are the other half? Ha, ha, ha. Think about that for a minute. I'm going to rest here for a minute. Huh? Hmm? What? What other half? Who are the other half? If he said, I hope that you, my followers, the followers of Muhammad will be the other half. Who are the other half? And I want to tell you this, brothers and sisters, you'd be shocked to learn that many prophets didn't have many followers. Uli da'alei um. Uh, um and the prophet said, I was shown all of, the, all of the, uh, the nations, and I saw some prophets who had a handful of uh, followers. I saw a prophet that had one or two followers. I saw prophets who had no followers. Who the other half? The other half are the true followers of the prophets, the true followers of Jesus, the true followers of Moses, the true followers of Abraham and Noah. But now we got a dilemma. And what's the dilemma? Many people may believe that they're following their prophet, only to learn that they're not. Because there's one thing that's non-negotiable. God is one. Allah mentioned in the Quran, they have disbelieved who said that Jesus is the Son of God. They have disbelieved who say that Jesus is God. Jesus is beloved by us, one of the most honorable, respected of those near to God in this life and the hereafter, but he's not God, nor the Son of God. The job of the Muslims, and, and, and let me tell you this, brothers and sisters, you got a big job as Muslims. You have a huge job. Let me tell you why your job is so big. Because we have the last revelation, we believe. Why? We people faith. Because we believe that we have the last revelation, we can check those who came before us. And those who came before us, the mistakes that they made, not Jesus. Jesus didn't make no mistakes. In fact, let me tell you something. Let me give you another tidbit. And sometimes, brothers and sisters, you have to be uh, like uh, uh, detectives when you look at scripture. And sometimes hints are, are, are given. On the day of judgment, when the people are about to be punished, and the people are going to look for help, and they're going to go to the prophets, they're going to go to Adam, alayhi salat wa salam, to seek intercession. And you know what? Adam will say, nafsi, 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 ithabu ila ghayri. I don't, I'm concerned about myself. And then Adam will mention the faults that he did, eating from the tree. Go to Noah. Noah will say, Nafsi, nafsi, nafsi. Oh, myself, myself. I'm concerned about myself. He will mention his mistakes. Ibrahim. Ibrahim will mention his mistakes. Musa will mention his mistakes. And when they come to Jesus, Jesus will say, 
اذهبوا الى محمد but no tradition will you ever read that Jesus mentioned any mistakes see it's a it's a it's a you know it's a subtlety that you got to see it so we can't attribute anything to him at all wrong at all everything Jesus did was right and exact the problem is when God took Jesus from him and then some people begin to mistranslate what Jesus had. You know something else about Jesus that makes him really special? Allah says, يُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابُ وَالْحِكْمَةُ وَالْتُرَاءُ وَالْإِنْجِيرُ And we will teach him the book and the wisdom and the Torah and the Injil. And then he will come back on the day of judgment. And he will be a believer in Al-Quran. Before the day of judgment, he'll come back and believe in, in Al-Quran. So brothers and sisters, that's our story, and I'm sticking to it. Assalamu alaikum. Now, it's the fun part, the question and answer part. That's the fun part. Yeah, that's all right, Mr. Smarty. But I got some questions. Now, anyone of you have, how many of you have questions? Raise your hand. Questions or statements? Now, let me say this too. Let me tell you the ground rules. I love you. I love all of you. You can ask a question. You can make a statement. But I want to be honest with you. I love you. But they didn't come to hear you tonight. <laughs> Get my point? All right? Make a, you're gonna make, I'm going to let you go for it. You're going to see me. I'm going to let you go for a while. But if you go too long, all right, I'm going to come get you. Questions, statements, points, please feel free. And, and, and don't hesitate, brothers and sisters. Please don't hesitate. Any questions you have. My good brother, yes, sir. But by the way, I want to I thank you for helping us. I, I really appreciate that. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, is it, do you guys not believe that Jesus um, could not have been God because you believe that Muhammad preached there's only one God, but um, in the Old Testament, they also say that there is also one, only one God. But is it possible that it's just our, I mean, and Jesus claimed that he was God too, according to Christians. Is it possible that there's just some, like the idea of the Trinity is just very hard to comprehend. I mean, if, yes. if, if that idea was true, would, would that contradict what you're saying? I mean, is yeah. it? Think about this for a moment, and that's a fair question, but think about this for a moment. If we depend on every prophet that came, let's talk about every prophet that came before Jesus, all of them, not one of them ever said that God had a son. And what happened is that the last book, and, and, and what puts Muslims in this favorable position is that we, be, we believe, see, we, see the, you know the difference between us? We believe in, 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 the, in the gospel in its original form. And we believe in the Torah. So we believe that the Quran now has to make sure it has to, it has to clarify any mistakes. Let me show you what I mean. Brothers and sisters, Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, had a big job. And one of his jobs is that people are going to follow him and follow his sunnah very closely, follow his practices very closely. Therefore, how do Muslims describe the sunnah of the prophet? Three ways. Number one, what he said. Whatever the prophet said, this is a sunnah. The prophet said it. Or number two, what he did. And the third one is very interesting. What was done in his presence, and he didn't disapprove of it. It's part of his sunnah. So if someone, like, now me, I love chicken. I mean, I can eat chicken every day. I'm serious. All day long, I love chicken. Now, if someone was eating chicken in the presence of the prophet, and the prophet didn't say anything, I say, yeah. <laughs> now, the same thing with the Quran. Because the Quran is the last book, it must correct the mistakes. 
And I know people, people of faith, they're going to believe it because they're people of faith. But the one thing, if you are honest, if we're honest, we will say that this teaching of the Trinity and the teaching that Jesus is the Son of God is absolutely new. What Muslims will call the bid'ah, a religious innovation. And so what the Quran has to do, it has to now correct it. Not Jesus. We don't believe that Jesus ever told people to worship him. He's the son of God or any of that or the Trinity. I'm not saying we reject it because it's irrational. That's not my argument. We reject it because God said it's not true. As simple as that. Now, one of the things that will happen in the, in the last day, we believe that everybody's going to believe in Jesus. And me, meaning that pe he's going to denounce people of worshiping him. And people will believe in him like they believe in every prophet. And every, every prophet, with no exception, taught that God is one. Every prophet, no exception. It's a matter of, course, it's a matter of faith. And that's what, your, that's what your argument would be. Belief in Trin Trinity is very difficult to believe in. It's a matter of faith. Ultimately, that's your argument. Yes, my brother. Um, recently, I was having a discussion uh, with, a, uh, with a lady who happened to be Christian. And her point to me was, how can you believe that you're on the right path when you don't have a savior? Meaning, Jesus. And, uh, you know, how, how can you believe that you'll be saved without, without Jesus, without believing Jesus as being the savior? Could you touch, about, touch upon that? Again, again... Brothers and sisters, you know what? A lot of times arguments are going to always come back to the same basic principle of, of faith. Now, the question is, again, all the prophets who came before Jesus, how were they saved? They were saved by that prophet and the revelation that the prophet brought. And we believe in the same thing. See, when you talk about a savior, that's, his, that's in a Christian uh, terminology, in, in, a, in a Christian uh, belief system. But we believe, by the way, let me tell you something which is interesting about Muslims believe, and some Muslims don't understand this. Christians talk about more grace than works, am I right? That you're saved not by works, but by grace, right? Believe it or not, Muslims believe in that. Almost. The prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said that none of you can be saved by your works alone. None of you. He said, they said, even you, Ya Rasulullah, he says, even me, except by Allah's grace. That doesn't mean that we don't do good works. We have to, because we can be punished for not doing good works. We can be punished for not making prayer. We can be punished for not praying. But in the ultimate, in, in, in reality, the only way we can go to paradise is God's grace. I mean, really. I mean, that's really the bottom line. And that's good, because you don't get arrogant and think that you did something. You remember the guy, this is a young man. Very pious man, right? He was, he was, he was famous for his, his, his piety. And, and he would be in the masjid, he would be praying every day. And he, like, he had a spot, right, where he would always pray. So one day he's praying, right? And some people behind him say, oh, look at that man, that righteous young man. He's, he's praying, he's always praying. And while he was praying, he says, I'm fasting too. <laughs> huh? 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 You get it? Huh? You get it? Huh? You blew it. <laughs> so, um, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I love Jesus. You cannot imagine how much I love him. I'm a Muslim. And I and the Muslims here, we love Jesus. And we don't diminish him at all. And, and, um, and you know, there's, there's traditions that we have about Jesus that you don't even find in, in, in Christian tradition. I'll give you one which is very interesting, which helped me. The prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, once Jesus saw a man stealing, and Jesus asked him, uh, did you steal? And the man swore by God. I swear by God, I believe in, I, 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 I didn't steal. And you know what Jesus said? I meant to be la, I believe in God, and I deny my own eyes. And that's good, brothers and sisters, because you know what? Sometimes, you know, you look at things, and it's not what they appear to be. You know, you see somebody, a Christian, a Jew, or Muslim, going to a, a liquor store. And next thing you, you start telling people he was drunk. I mean, he went to the liquor store to go to the bathroom. <laughs> you know, come on. We don't give each other the benefit of the doubt. Now, I'm sure that Governor Spitzer, 
No, he was probably trying to give us some good advice. Bad. All the way in the back, yes. First of all, I just want to say thank you so much for coming out to talk to us. Assalamu alaikum. I'm, uh, I'm actually you. a Christian. And I was wondering, uh, the last statement you said um, that Jesus will come back on the Day of Judgment and become a believer in Al-Quran. Um, why is he, just point of clarification, um, you said that there was another miracle um, where Jesus basically speaks and the first thing he says is, um, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, the way I heard it was the first thing he says is, you know, I am a servant yes. of, the, of the one, yes. Allah. Yes. Um, so if, if he's coming back on the day of judgment and he's going to become a believer of Al-Quran, wasn't he by the no, no. Islamic tradition a believer oh, no, no, of no, no, Al-Quran no. Oh, all Oh, along? no, no, no. Uh -uh. He was absolutely a believer. I'm just saying that the last book is the Quran. And, it, and the point I'm making is the, the, the miracle of Jesus is that he had the Torah and the Injil and then a believer of the Quran only because the Quran came after him. So we're not, this is not to suggest to take anything away from Jesus that Jesus wasn't a believer. He was absolutely a believer. No question about that. We just wanted to make sure that people don't get the misconception that Jesus is going to reject the Quran. That Jesus is going to say, no, 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 I'm not, no, not, you know, we got to go back to the, to the Injil. That's the only point that I was making. But Jesus, 100%, have always been a, a, a believer and ha will have his place in, in the paradise. No doubt about it. Thank you for that point. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Uh, my friend and I have a two-part question. Um, one is, how long after the Old Testament was the New Testament revealed? And also, uh, the difference between Salat in Islam and prayer in Christianity. Yeah, good. Um, the, 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 I, I, you know, I could be off by um, some years, but when you talk about the Old Testament, Really, the Jews would say the Torah, because everything in the Old Testament is not Torah. And so it, it, Moses came about 4,000 years ago, and Jesus about 2,000 years ago. So you're talking about, about, about 2,000 years in between. Now, Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Sallu kema ra'aytumuni usalli. Pray as you see me pray. So when you look at the, the, the Muslims, and again, the beautiful thing about Islam is that you know, let, let, let me say this. This is very important for you to understand this. Our prophet said that my example and the example of the prophets that came before me is the example of a man who built a building. And the building was perfectly put together. And everyone went around the building and was marveling at the beauty of the building and said, oh, what a beautiful building, except there was one brick missing, one brick. And he said, I am that brick. And what does that mean? That means that Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, really didn't bring new stuff. The foundation of what he had is the same as the other prophets. And by his own analogy, what did he bring? He brought the brick. Now, now why is that important? Prayer is, 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 is critical. In the, in the Quran, it teaches that God taught, uh, the prophets taught the people to pray, the Christians, the Jews, whatever, to, talk, to pray. So the, the detail may be a little bit different, right? So Allah said in the Quran, al yawma akmautu lakum dinakum. This day have I perfected your religion for you. So now the prayer of the Muslim is such that I don't even think we understand the full value and significance of our prayer. We pray, we stand, we, we bow, and we get down in prostration. It's a wonderful uh, uh, exercise, spiritual exercise, and physical exercise. So we believe that the prayer of the Muslims is the perfected state. And so now we have so much tradition that it's important for us to follow the prophet if we want to do things right and get an A, then we follow God's last messenger, Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. Think about this. 
We mentioned in our talk, what prophet that's, that lived 950 years? Noah. If you think about it, Noah was here 950 years, but yet, how much of his traditions do we know? Not much. But when you look at Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, from the time he became a messenger until the time he died, how many years? Huh? 23 years, right? 23 years, but yet, look at all the rich traditions. Hundreds of thousands. Uh, nine volumes of Bukhari, Hadith, Muslim Hadith, Tirmidhi, Abu Daud, Ibn Majah. In all of these things, what the Prophet ate, how he ate, what foods he ate, how he dressed, what he said to the people, how he worshipped, how he fasted, how he performed pilgrimage. In minute detail, why is that? Because he's God's last messenger. And you have to know that because people will come after him. Thousands of years later, in France, 10% of the population Muslims. In Germany, 1,500 masjids. In Russia, 15% of the population Muslim. In China, millions of Muslims. In Japan, masjids all over the place. Everywhere you look on this globe, there's Muslims. And every Muslim, they pray the same way. We talked about the miracles of the Prophet. How come we didn't talk about the miracle of Muhammad tonight? Because Muhammad's miracle, peace and blessing be upon him, is the Quran. His miracle is the Quran and is witnessed by millions of people today. One billion five hundred million people. That's the witness. What, what kind of miracle is it? Ten million people have memorized this Quran, word for word. Even they're not Arabs. We got Muslims from Indonesia. Muslims from Malaysia, Muslims from Pakistan and, 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 uh, and Niger and Nigeria and Senegal and the United States who have memorized this Quran. It's a, it's a, it's a miracle. So my point is, um, listen, God Almighty, he accepts the worship of people. But if you want the perfected state, the perfected prayer is the prayer of Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. Yes, ma'am, all the way in the back. Uh, thank you, Mr. Quran. I was just wondering, um, what are... Um some people say that your interpretation of the Quran is every man himself. So whatever you interpret from the Quran, it's your interpretation. One of the mistakes, a sister asked the question, um, people believe that you can read the Quran in everybody's interpretation by themselves. This is very dangerous. Um, if you want the, the best explanation of the Quran, if you really want to know, uh, they, they, it's the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. The first question is, how did he understand the Qur'an? Because Allah says, Allah taught him the Qur'an. And Allah taught the Prophet the Qur'an, peace and blessing be upon him. So if you really want to understand the meaning of the Qur'an, then we should go first to the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. There's some people, if our hearts are not right, will misinterpret things in the Qur'an for, uh, uh, with, with their own weakness and their own sickness. So the key is, A, the Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, B, the companions of the Prophet, because they were with him, and they understood how he interpreted the Qur'an. And then next, those generations that followed, because the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, خَادُ أُمَّةِ قَرْنِ ثُمَّ لَذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ The best of my ummah is my generation, and then the generation that follows it, and then the generation that follow it. So you be safe. If, for instance, uh, if, if Umar, the Prophet's companion, or Abu Bakr, or um, Ibn Abbas, عنهمان, said that the Prophet said this verse meant that, you'd be safe to accept that. And then the scholars of Islam, who understand the rules of interpretation, who understand the Arabic language. The, the, the Quran is revealed in the Arabic language. And one thing I learned, uh, I will never ever repeat a verse from the Quran or hadith of the Prophet until I first see it in Arabic. I've read books, I'm telling you the truth, I've read books. Now, I'm not a scholar in Arabic at all, but I know enough Arabic to know I've read some translation of some hadith that is absolutely 100% wrong. So you, you have to know the Arabic language, you have to know the Quran and the, and, and the rules of interpretation. And it's dangerous for someone to just pick up the book and think that they can explain what it means and they'll find themselves uh, deviated. Yes, sir. Prayer of Jesus peace be upon him in the Bible. What's the description of this prayer? I, I don't know. I, one, one thing, brothers and sisters, um, I, don't, I don't pretend that I am knowledgeable of the Bible. I, I don't do that, and I'll tell you why. 
I, I never want it to be said that I think that I understand the Bible because even if I quote word for word from the Bible, then people will, will um, dispute me in its interpretation. So I don't even do it. I, don't, I, don't, I just don't think, it's, I don't think it's fair for me. So I per, per, personally, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't do that. I, I respect it too much. I respect the Christians and, you know, and, their, and their scholars and how they interpret the book. So I personally don't, don't do it. Uh, three more questions. Yes, sir. The mic's working. Yes, sir, brother. Um, I'm just wondering, I'm a Christian, and I was wondering exactly um, which parts of the Injil you believe uh, have been edited, changed, mis, you know, passed along wrongly, and if there was any historical uh, evidence to back that up. Yeah, the, the one thing, uh, when you start dealing with the, the four Gospels, again, we're going to get into some de sort of debate, but there seems to be contradictions within themselves when you read one after the other. And, and again, I can't say for sure which verses I have been added, only to say this in general. Any verse that goes against those non-negotiable pointers for us can't be right. If any verse is translated, interpreted as Jesus saying, worship me, or I'm the son of God, cannot be reconciled Islamically. So therefore, as, as, as a Muslim, then I would reject any interpretation that, that appears to give that uh, connotation. I know that there are Christian sects who do not believe that Jesus is God or the Son of God. They don't believe that Jesus is divine, that they believe he's a human being. There are Christians like that. I think they call them Unitarians and others. And so, uh, so again, I would, I would, this is what we would accept. Yes, sir. I just want to know, what happens to those who never received the message of Islam? That's a very good question. We believe that God is merciful. And I haven't read it from the Quran or from the Hadith, but I've read it from scholars, that anyone who never got an opportunity to hear the truth, Allah somehow will give them an opportunity to hear the truth and to accept it or reject it. Allahu alam. And I say Allahu alam, God knows best, I'm not, I'm not sure. But I do know this is that he is most merciful. And it's impossible for him not to be merciful. So I would just say that um, he, in his wisdom, he knows. And, and, you, and, and you know, let me just give you, let me give you one example of God's mercy. And there's an interesting verse in Quran, and this will be my last statement, and then we're gonna go after one more question. Who will be the, who will be the last one? Okay, inshallah, you'll be the last one, but let me say this first. Um, you know there's an interesting verse in the Quran. You know what about Allah? You know what I learned after being on this earth um, a little bit more than half a century? <laughs> it's going to take you a minute to figure that out, right? <laughs> I learned about Allah is that sometimes in the moment you think you figured him out, you can't. He says in Quran, إِلَّمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيدُ الْإِقَابُ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ you should know that God is very strong and punishing on the one hand, but then he's extremely forgiving and merciful on the other hand. Let me give an example. I mean, listen, uh, our prophet gave us a, 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 um, a tradition where there was a woman, she was a prostitute. Was it in New York State? I just want to let you know from the beginning because I know, I know what you're thinking. And she, she was thirsty, and she went to a well and she got water. And she saw a dog that appeared to be thirsty. And what she did is she crawled down back in the well, she took off a shoe, and she put water in the shoe and she crawled back out of the well and gave the dog some water. And our prophet said that God Almighty looked upon her, and because of that good deed of giving water to a dog, God forgave our sins. And one tradition said, he entered into paradise. See, giving water to a dog. On the one hand, and on the other hand, there's another tradition, there's a woman who had a cat. And she locked up the cat and put uh, chains on the cat and didn't feed the cat and kept the cat in captivity until the cat died. 
and God, uh, the prophet said, God punished her in the hellfire because of a bad treatment of a cat. You see, there are so many instances where we, we do what appears to be little deeds, and he gives us big rewards. And then sometimes it seems as if we do something in a small way that appears to be very small to us, and he punishes us. So I'm, I'm saying that, you know, we... You know, let me, let me say this. Let's be real. All of us who sit here, people of faith, we try our best. By coming, I want to thank, for, first of all, all the Christians and the Jews and non-Muslims who came here, maybe Sikhs, Hindu, Buddhists. I want to thank you for coming tonight. And because, you know, I have a tremendous amount of respect for you. Because you didn't have to come. You didn't have to come. You could have stayed in your cozy place. And the very fact that you came here to, you know, you know exchange with us, to dialogue with us, to at least understand where we're coming from. I appreciate that. And, that. and that really takes a lot. And I want to commend every one of you for coming and having the patience to sit here for this time and, and to, to, to listen with us. I really, I really appreciate that. And we are trying our best, you know, as, as Muslims and Christians and Jews. But in the end of the day, you know what I say? Be honest to what you say. If you say that you're Muslim, then do what a Muslim is supposed to do. Don't be a hypocrite. If you're a Christian, if you're a believer of Jesus, then follow Jesus and do what he said do. If, you, if you're a Jew and you believe in Moses and believe in the Torah, then follow that book and do what, he, what you're taught to do according to the scripture. Don't be unfaithful to your book. That's what we ask tonight. So we, we just want to be um, sincere. Last question. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Well, um, over at the uh, Nova Community College, where there's always a table, uh, at least once a week or every other week, where there's a, a the Christian church or whatever they come by, and uh, once we had a dialogue between uh, us and them, where he brought the I guess it's called the Lord's Prayer, and Al Fatha, and he compared them. I was wondering if you can uh, talk about that, or if there's any sort of relation. I got a feeling you want to talk about that. <laughs> no, I don't. You know. I don't remember. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Is that the one? Not the Lord my shepherd? No. Uh, Lord, um, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. I don't know, man. I forgot it. <laughs> I, was, I haven't said it so, I said it so long. I don't know. What you want me to do? I don't know. I'll just say this um, in, in, in concluding words. Again, I, I don't want to disparage anyone. And what, and what they believe. But I will say this about this, this Al-Fatiha, and then I conc conclude. The first chapter of the Quran must be important. It must be important because um, every prayer that a Muslim makes, he has to recite the first chapter of the Quran. Every prayer. Not only every prayer, but every unit, every raka'ah. He has to say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawmiddin until the very end. And in the end of it, it says, the one thing, and we say it every day, and I close with this. Our Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said that Allah, the Almighty, said, Ya ibadi, kulukun dolun illa man hadaytuhu, fastahduni ahdikum. Oh, my servants, every one of you are misguided. Some of you, every one of you. Most of you, every one of you are misguided unless I guide you, God. Therefore, ask me and I will guide you. And so every day, Muslim prays 17 times a day. Ihdina sirat al Making supplication, oh God, guide me to the straight path. One of our founding fathers of this nation, I forgot who it was, I think it was Thomas Jefferson, who talked about following the truth wherever it may lead us. How many of us have that kind of courage to follow the truth wherever it may lead you? 1969, I joined a group called the Nation of Islam the same group that Malcolm X was part of. In 1975, I learned that what I had thought 
was the truth, wasn't the truth. And I was blessed in 1975 to find this Islam, to find a belief in Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, and a belief in all the prophets. I asked Allah for guidance. Allah guided me. Thanks be to Allah. I still ask for Allah guidance today. And every one of us should ask for guidance. Don't become so comfortable in what we're doing as not to receive guidance. Follow the truth wherever it may lead you. May Allah bless all of you. Thank you for coming. Assalamu alaikum.